Hey everyone, I cannot be more excited to be announcing today's speaker for our 7 Minute Social. She is someone I have known her entire life. I was actually in delivery room when she was being born. Just kidding. She's my cousin. And we are two months apart. And I cannot be more proud of the woman she has become. God has truly blessed and anointed her life and has given her the gift of ministry. She has launched her own women's ministry program called Her Gathering. And she is about to start her 12-week leadership program, which I am so excited to be a part of. If you'd like to learn about her and all the services she provides, you can visit her website at www.cynthiamaselli.com. Well, everyone, please join me in welcoming my cousin, Cynthia. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. It is my hope to bring you some encouragement during these times. As we know, there is nothing new under the sun. So please don't look around and be discouraged at what you see, but let's be encouraged for we have a powerful God. He is the same God who in Genesis had a man named Noah build an ark that some say took between 50 and 75 years. But either way, it was not an overnight kind of thing. And that took a lot of faith to keep building when he couldn't see or understand. But suddenly, the time came and it rained so hard on the earth, it began to flood. And no one in his family could hear the screaming of the people outside. They didn't understand it. They didn't know when it would stop. But he and his family had to trust God. And in Exodus, we read about a man named Moses who was a former murderer, by the way, lead the Israelites out of the hands of the Egyptians. And God used the staff in Moses' hand to perform mighty miracles before the king. Moses, in fact, struggled with God to believe he was even qualified to do what God was telling him to go do, but he did it anyway. And in Numbers, we read about a man named Joshua who took over from Moses after his passing to lead the Israelites into the promised land. It was so intense that we actually read about God encouraging Joshua himself three times in one passage to be strong and courageous. And in 1 Samuel, there was a man named David who defeated a giant with one stone and a slingshot. David wasn't even wearing battle armor to defend himself. In the book of Esther, we read about a woman and God used her to save all the Jews from death. She risked her life. She just simply trusted in God and walked out in obedience to what she felt she was called to do. She ended up revealing the enemy's plan. Her life was spared and so were all her people. And we see in Daniel, three men by the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down to the king and it angered the king so much they were thrown into a fire. And yet they came out alive and completely untouched and unharmed. Why do I share these things with you? Because they all have something in common. They all lived through dark and tumultuous times, and yet God faithfully brought them out and saved them. This is very good news for you and I, as we are seeing more of the evil and the chaos in this world that is being exposed and brought to light. God, the same God that guided and rescued the people I shared with you about in the Bible is the same God on the throne today. Did you know that the phrase, do not fear, is written 365 times in the Bible? So any day that you may come up against fear, God is reminding us, do not fear. Instead, look up to him and ask, help me to trust you, God, and show me what can I do today with what you've given me? How do I use my gifts, my talents, and my resources to help myself and those around me? See, the enemy uses fear all the time because it paralyzes people. The enemy wants to cause people to retreat, to be confused, to stir chaos, as we see, to lose hope, to give up, especially God's children, because he knows God is real and powerful. And the reason he hates you and I so much is because we bear God's image in us. But in the times of darkness, the light can shine brighter. We can see the stories that I shared previously, how God can use anyone who's willing, and this is great news because that means that we can do something in this point in time, especially during this dark hour on earth. So today I challenge you, friend, ask God yourself, what can I do to serve you? We know that God tells us to love him with all our heart, our mind, and soul. So that's always our number one ongoing goal. He also tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So that's our number two ongoing goal. He also tells us to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And in James chapter 5, it says that the prayers of the righteous avail much. 
That means our prayers can shift and fight against the powers of evil. And we need those prayers right now, friends. This is our hour as Christians to pray. These three things done daily alone will make a greater impact for God's kingdom than we can even begin to imagine. Because just like King David, who was out about tending a sheep and simply being obedient to God, God saw him, he saw his heart, and then he sent for him and anointed him to be king. And if you know his story, then you know the odds were against him at the start when his own father didn't think he was qualified for such a role. But it's not what man thinks that you or I are capable of. It's not even about what we think we can do. But God knows that when we give him the chance and we trust in him, he will bring us opportunities to partner with him and to bring the hope of heaven on earth to defeat the evil forces through our prayers united together. While we may not understand God's ways, we can be reminded of his proven unchanging character. Because in Numbers 23, 19, it tells us that God is not a man and he will not lie. And in Acts 10, 34, Peter tells us that he is not even a respecter of people, which simply means he doesn't play favorites. And at the same time, he is so loving that he gives us free will to choose him. Real love is not love if it is forced. So you and I wake up every day with an opportunity to choose him, to choose to live his way. And the best part when we do is that we can see as in these stories, God always works out what the enemy intended for harm to turn it around and use it for our good. So I encourage you, if you haven't yet accepted Jesus into your heart, this is your opportunity, friend. Maybe you're hearing the message for the first time like this, or maybe you've gone astray and you thought that life was better without him. Just tell him with your own mouth, I repent, Lord. Help me to turn away from my old ways. Help me to live the life that you desire for me. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died for me and that he resurrected and he lives today. Give me a heart to serve you that wants to live and please you. And if you're already his child and wondering what you can do, make sure you're doing these three daily things I mentioned, because again, this is our hour to rise up by praying on our knees and to fight the battle at hand. But even after all this passes, please let us not forget that we need him daily and that we need to seek his will. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are so loved and I am rooting for you.